Terra Luna Classic, a community divided. In this video, we're going to provide both sides of the story, what's actually going on at the moment, how we can get Terra Luna Classic back on track, and also what is going on with this current movement around boycotting Binance, which is a huge movement. It's gaining a lot of traction. As you can see, 23,000 tweets in just the last um, day or so. Also, the Luna community is hammering Binance at the moment and it's making it a lot more difficult for them. There's a lot of drama on both sides of the story where now Binance are coming up with different fees and I think it's just trying to hold the Terra Luna Classic, which is being held on the Binance ecosystem at the moment, just on there for longer as it's giving people more fear. So there's a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt. We're going to try and cut through all that and just look at the facts, what's really going on. I explained to you the scene, I set the scene, and then we'll go through what's really going on with Terra Luna Classic. Have we completely been derailed, or is it just a speed bump? And this is the process we need to go through to get to a long term goal of the recovery of Terra Luna Classic. So if you enjoyed this sort of approach, like, comment, subscribe. Comment, are you holding on Binance or are you holding off chain now? And let's get into the video. So with this, I'm just going to set the scene. So two days ago, 23rd of September. CZ came out with a statement pretty much saying that he will not be supporting the burn. And the short of it is, because a few months ago he said once the burn is implemented on chain for Terra Luna Classic, we he said we would look at supporting um, Terra Luna Classic in their off-chain burning. Um, now he sort of reneged on that a bit and pretty much went, well, it's not going to happen unless all other exchanges are doing the burn as well. But that's obviously angered the community. There's a lot of backlash around that. So now what's happening is effectively with the community, he has now came out and gone, right, this is my new proposal, which I'm putting to you. If you can do this, Binance will do the burn. And this is actually a full statement because he has now said this. So there's a few steps we're going to look at for this. So step one will be implementing an opt-in button for people to opt into the 1.2% burn. And this is just on lunacy trading on Binance. Then once the opt-in accounts reach 25% of the total lunacy held on Binance, we will start to charge the 1.2% burn on all trades. This will prevent, prevent people who hold lunacy from being affect, to affect the votes. So with this, it's also gonna give um, effect the early adopters peace of mind that they are not um, only paying these fees to just get effectively a quorum vote it's going to be for a long-term encouragement because step three is once these opt-in traders reach 50 percent of the total lunacy trading volume on binance we'll roll out a 1.2 percent burn and this prevents the lunacy whales who hold large amounts but don't actively trade influencing the vote so effectively what you're saying with that is if you've got a big whale wallet which has huge amounts of trading volume so you've got to move it once and you can see huge numbers so it's just trying to say it's not one person that's going to influence all of the voting with this so the time frame is around one month to do this and he thinks if um lunacy holders can do this and show there is enough demand on the binance chain for this 1.2 percent burn they will completely implement it so that is the scene being set um, hopefully I was clear enough on that. I do apologize. I've butchered any of that But let's go into what's really going on at the moment with the rest of this news because there's more to the story <laughs> I know it's mad in the short term anyway So as you can see at the moment Binance holds around 2.3 trillion Terra Luna Classic This is the Binance holding wallet What's now going on in the community and it's just being spread is a lot of fear with fees so what the issue is, is effectively Binance, if you want to withdraw off the chain, is effectively saying the fees are over 100,000 Lunic, which if you start influencing this on just the burn percentage, um, it was quite a great tweet by, um, as you can see by the fella here, with this, it's pretty much saying that it should be around 6,000 for the fees rather than the 120,000, which is obviously a drastically different number. So is it, what is it, what's building up this fee? Is it just Binance have put a huge markup on top of their own fees to make this just more difficult for people to, one, remove all their Luna Classic from it, but also to get people to swap and trade and actually show the trading volume because there's just higher fees, so it's just going to make it more difficult for your average person. Obviously, it's a well wallet, it's completely different, they're not going to care as much. 
but as a whale wallet, obviously this is it's gonna be very difficult. So is is it some sneakery? Is it just is this a bit of misunderstanding and Binance need to clear up their fees and then it'll be fine going forward? But at the moment that is quite a lot of controversy going wrong with the fees. And this is why the boycott Binance movement is just gaining more and more traction. Um it's been pushed by quite a few big crypto influencers such as Crypto King, Classy, they're coming out and saying that the more they look into it, the more they think Binance has been unfair to the community and to this thing completely boycott Binance. So what everyone's hoping is the majority of this 2.3 trillion just gets pulled off the exchange, goes to um, a Terra Station wallet and is completely removed. So that is what's going on. And it's quite an interesting point of view. Um, will it actually happen or not? It's, we only time will tell. But it depends. Do we want to play into Binance's hands and go for the opt-in game, which is probably a long-term strategy. But um, obviously, it has identified flaws with Terra Luna Classic in terms of we are beholden to centralized exchanges, and Binance have so much power over what goes on at the moment with Terra Luna Classic. So long-term, there's going to be a movement away from that and try and find a decentralized exchange for all trading and volume for Terra Luna Classic, but it's going to be very difficult. Also, another note, staking is progressing very well. Um, bonded's dropped, but unbonded, as combined, is up. So if people just move all of their money into staking, showing how strong it is, that's completely taken off the finance exchange, which we might see in the coming days. This is another message that they're completely boycotting Binance. So it's going to be an interesting way to see which way this is going to go long and short term. Um, it's had quite a big positive influence on the overall burn for Terra Luna Classic. And we have burnt over 1 billion Terra Luna Classic tokens at this moment in time. But I'd just like to refresh you on what's the long term process for Terra Luna Classic and the recovery process for that. So obviously the Terra Rebels have a long term vision for it and I thought I'd just go back into their proposal for their own governance and what their own vision is. So keeping strong with Terra Luna Classic, obviously proof of stake governance needs to be restored. From there they're going to build and try and get USTC to be restored. So long term that is when you're going to see a lot of power come back to Terra Luna Classic if they can restore the stablecoin and the whole of the ecosystem and then it's building upon that solid value for Terra Luna Classic. Please keep in mind that's a long-term vision and they don't recognize me here to June 2023. I've got long-term value back to the ecosystem. So it's a long-term game. Um, this could just be a speed bump and we just have to get over the speed bump and then we'll be back to the races. Um, also, I just wanted to say um, it's just an update from Terra Rebels as well. This is down to how the fee's being calculated. There's been some um, slight issues with this, and it's been identified to Edward Kim, who is a developer for the Terra Rebels, and it should be updated in version 23, the new wording for that, and that's been identified on GitHub. Um, so Edward Kim's on with it. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. It's just going to be a patch and other fees being calculated at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see if that has any long-term influence for the burn for Terra Luna Classic. But I don't have any more information to you than that than ever what Edward Kim retweeted. So that is the final message I have for you guys today. I think long term, as long as the community is undivided and stay strong together, we can build something great. None of this is financial advice. Follow my TikTok and Twitter if you enjoy this stuff. Like, comment, subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.